to my favorite people in the world, the seniors. I'm a senior. I know you don't know that. Nobody knows that. Maybe you don't have to tell them, but I'm a senior. I was very sick, and I took this medicine, and it was incredible. It was incredible. I, w I could have walked out the following day sooner. Well, whether you love him or hate him, you have to admit he is irrepressible. He may be 74, but he bounced back from COVID like a teenager, and he's putting it all down to what he calls a miracle cure. During his three nights in hospital, President Trump was given an experimental cocktail of antibodies called RegenCov2. He was also given a steroid called dexamethasone and a course of the antiviral drug remdesivir, plus a few other over-the-counter medications. But for the president, the star of the show was definitely RegenCov2, and he wants all Americans to have it if they need it. It's a cure. For me, I walked in, I didn't feel good. A short 24 hours later, I was feeling great. I wanted to get out of the hospital. And that's what I want for everybody. I want everybody to be given the same treatment as your president. Well, President Trump is clearly in a hurry, but we at the Nexus have a few questions. What is RegenCov2? We know it's an antibody, but how does it work? And is it safe? America's drug regulator, the FDA, has yet to approve it, and trials are ongoing. And if it is proven to be safe, when will people outside the United States be able to get it? And a bonus question, should we be worried that Trump plays golf with the CEO of Regeneron, the company that makes the drug? I think this was a blessing from God that I caught it. This was a blessing in disguise. I caught it. I heard about this drug. I said, let me take it. It was my suggestion. I said, let me take it. And it was incredible the way it worked. OK, let's bring in our guest now. And joining us is Professor Dinesh Saralea, who is leading a major clinical trial of RegenCov2 in the United Kingdom. And we also have Dr. William Schaffner, who is a public health consultant in the United States and a member of the CDC's COVID vaccine advisory group. Uh, both professors are welcome here on the show. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Professor William Schaffner, I'd like to start with you. Uh, RegenCov2 is a mixture of two monoclonal antibodies. Can you just explain how that works? Well, a monoclonal antibody is an artificially produced reproduction of what humans normally produce when they get over an infection and then are protected. This monoclonal antibody uh, actually will neutralize the virus. That's its intention. The virus you can think of as a sphere with antigens sticking out, the so-called spike antigen. And this protein actually covers the spike antigen. The spike antigen actually is a key that goes into the lock of a cell. That permits the virus to enter and reproduce and make its mischief. This monoclonal antibody actually does not permit that. The virus can enter a cell. So if a person is infected, that ought to reduce the severity of the infection because the virus can't multiply further in the body. It's a very nice theory, and we certainly hope it works. I think we all do. Now, our bodies um, make antibodies naturally. What is the advantage of having this artificial cocktail of antibodies injected into us? Well, it takes the body a bit of time, 10 days to two weeks, to produce sufficient antibody to be effective and to fight the virus. By providing the antibody early, shortly after infection, we would hope to abort the infection so it doesn't go on to something more severe. And there are other studies that are looking at using this antibody cocktail as an additional way to fight severe infections. So there are a couple of possibilities here for this antibody to really be an asset in reducing the severity of the impact of COVID on our population. I just want to get on to the uh, safety aspect here. The, the FDA, America's drug regulator, is yet to give it its approval. It's still at the trial stage. Isn't that incredibly risky to give the president of the United States a drug that's still in the experimental phase? 
Well, obviously, there's some risk associated with that. But, of course, we've been using monoclonal antibodies of various kinds for some time in medicine. So we all thought that the risk was very low. And the president received this uh, monoclonal antibody cocktail under uh, a compassionate use authorization. And that will permit the FDA to occasionally make an exception for an individual. But of course, he's wanting to make an exception for all seniors who get COVID and indeed all Americans eventually. And he wants to employ the emergency use authority in order to roll it out before it's been given FDA clearance. One prominent doctor we spoke to is all for it. I understand you're much more hesitant. I'm much more cautious. I think we ought to let the trial run. Therefore, we will know in which patients it's effective, how effective, and we will have an affirmation, I think, of its safety. And once we know that, then we can use it in the general population with real knowledge, comfort, and reassurance. Now, of course, Regeneron isn't the only one making this uh, monoclonal antibody. Eli Lilly and AstraZeneca are doing the same. And we've just had news, haven't we, that Eli Lilly is pausing its own trial, which kind of bears out your, your cautious approach. Um, why do you think they might have paused their, uh, their trial? Well, it's a good thing that they've paused the trial. It shows that the system is working. We have a system in place for all trials, whether for drugs or for vaccines, such that when a serious adverse event occurs, you can pause the trial and an external group of experts can review the event to see whether it might be related to the drug or the vaccine in question. That's all to the benefit of the volunteers. We have to make sure we're not exposing the volunteers to an unwarranted hazard. It's a very prudent way to proceed. OK, now the president is back on the campaign trail and he's been telling his supporters that he's been told he's immune. Let's have a quick listen. And now I'm immune, they tell me. I'm immune. I could come down and start kissing everybody. I'll kiss every guy, man and woman, man and woman. Look at that guy, how handsome he is. I'll kiss him. Not, not with a lot of enjoyment, but that's OK. Professor Schaffner, do you think he is now immune with all these antibodies in his system? Well, the antibodies certainly will provide protection for a period of time. And I suspect he is immune uh, for at least a period of time. The duration has yet to be determined. It's likely to be weeks to maybe a month or so, maybe even two months. We'll see about that. Uh, Which we'll the see. trial will tell us how long the protection actually will last. Well, let's bring in Professor Dinesh Saralea now. Uh, he is trialing Regen Cov 2 at a hospital in the United Kingdom as part of the nationwide recovery trial. Professor Saralea, um, you're only testing in that recovery trial a handful of treatments. How did Regen Cov 2 make it into that exclusive group? So, yeah, the, the research effort into COVID 19 in the UK has been coordinated that any experimental therapeutic will be forming part of what we call adaptive platform studies, which have what is called urgent public health badging. So the recovery trial is the largest COVID-19 uh, treatment trial in the world, having recruited over 14,000 patients into it. Currently, there are four arms in the treatment, uh, uh, treatment arms for in the recovery trial. So one is being standard of care, which is usual clinical practice. Dex, uh, azithromycin, which is a macrolide antibiotic, and uh, convalescent plasma, which is getting the plasma of two separate donors and infusing into people uh, who have COVID-19. Now, that arm has recruited about 1,000 patients across the country, and uh, recently, uh, Regen Cov 2 has been added as the fourth arm and will be rolled out in the recovery trial in all hospitals across the country, including my own. So we're Why looking not? forward to it and it'll be part of one of the arms of the recovery trial. And when do you expect to start injecting hospitalized patients with RegenCov2? In the coming week. So we, uh, the, uh, the protocol amendments are going through regulatory authority, authorities and individual partner organizations across the country. And once we get the green light and once the supplies of the IEP comes into our pharmacies, we will be able to use it straight away. So I'm looking at the next few days of uh, having the benefit of using Region Cove 2 
in some of my COVID-19 severe respiratory failure patients. Right, it's an open label uh, study. Does that mean that both the patient and the practitioner are aware of whether they're receiving and administering Regen Cov2? So it's, a, it's an adaptive study, as I say. So consenting takes place on the ward with the patient. And once they're consented, they get randomized. And randomization is open label. We know they get Regen Cov2. Yeah. So the randomization occurs. And then our pharmacy makes up the uh, monoclonal antibody, uh, which is then infused to the patient. So we know, the patient will know, so I always inform the patient, and it's been throughout like that. Um, it's been easy to consent. And I, and I think the good news about the president of the U.S. having this is it's found so much of media attention. So when I use that it has been used to the president, albeit as one of the combinations that he had, and I must say that uh, he received dexamethasone as well and high-dose steroid, which was mentioned. Um, so it's hard to say which one would have acted, because in my own opinion, when we started recruiting patients into the recovery trial, and I've recruited many of them. The first 45 patients who received dexamethasone, we were seeing some remarkable results in people recovering. So I think it'll be useful because now dexamethasone is standard of care in COVID-19 in the UK. Every patient gets it along with a antibiotic cocktail and then whether they need oxygen or ventilatory support, whether region code two makes that additional benefit to these patients. How long do you think it will be before you can come back on the show and tell us that it is effective and safe to be rolled out to the public? <clears throat> That's anybody's guess, I would say. Certainly with dexamethasone, we got a result within four months. I would say probably give it a few months. And once we have recruited sufficient numbers, I think we will be able to produce that high quality data that the world wants to know that region COVID-2 COVID will work. Because the recovery trial, in my opinion, has been an exemplar in clinical research. And I've done hundreds of clinical studies in the UK over the last 11 years. Nothing like the recovery. Consenting has been novel. We've been able to consent the sickest of patients into the trial, and it has always worked for their benefit. And I would think that if region COVID-2, recovery will show the world whether it works or not. Just a quick last question. Um, the Speaker of the House of Representatives in the United States, Nancy Pelosi, has recently claimed that the UK's medical regulations are not on a par with America's. Let's just roll that for a second. We have very stringent rules in terms of the Food and Drug Administration here about the number of um, clinical trials, the timing, the number of people, and all the rest, so that when a drug is approved by the FDA and the advisory, scientific advisory committee, uh, that it is safe and efficacious. My concern is that uh, the UK's system for that kind of judgment is not on a par with ours in the United States. Uh, Professor Saralea, do you agree with that? So I can only talk of my experience of having conducted cl clinical research uh, in the UK. Clinical research, the backbone of clinical research is good clinical practice. And the UK has already showed the world by leading the recovery trial and producing the first therapeutic, because not any other country <clears throat> which led that. And I can, I'm also leading a large COVID-19 vaccine trial, the Novavax trial, which is actually an American biotech company. And because of the quality of our research, they have chosen UK to be the only country to do their large phase three trial, recruiting 10,000 subjects, participants into the trial. We have recruited in our own center as of today, 204 patients into the trial, and we hope to recruit another 300 more in the next 10 days. So the UK, I would argue, is one of the best destinations to do clinical research. I myself have a senior leadership role within the National, national Institute for Health Research, and I sit in the National Badging Committee, and we have scrutinized every study which has come and decided the best therapeutics to go into our platform studies. So I would argue that the UK effort has probably been an exemplar to the rest of the world in COVID-19 research. Professor Shafter, uh, it's always good to get a second opinion uh, when it comes to medical, medical issues. Would you have any problems with a vaccine that emanated from the United Kingdom? Uh, none whatsoever. I think uh, Professor Saralea and his team are doing exemplary work, and uh, we've always had great confidence of course, it has to go through the U.S. regulatory system also, and I'm sure it would, should the vaccine be shown to be effective. And we're all hoping and looking forward to that, but it must go through the regulatory process, whether in the U.K. or the U.S., before we'll use it in the general population. Professor Schaffner and Professor Sarah Lair, thank you so much for your contributions here on The Nexus today. Now, We've discussed the medical side of this story. Let's uh, get into the politics. Don't forget, there is an election next month. And of course, there's a political angle. 
Just look at how the US networks and Democrats reacted when the president tested positive. It's extraordinary. The president and first lady have announced that they have both tested positive for the coronavirus. This may be the most dangerous moment that the U.S. government has ever faced. Preference was not to social distance, not to wear masks. And that's the problem. Unmasked and all the rest was sort of a, a, a brazen invitation. This is not a matter of politics. It's a bracing reminder to all of us that we have to take this virus seriously. Well, clearly, the journalists were appropriately grim-faced and serious. Joe Biden appeared respectfully somber. But for the president himself, the man who was ill with the disease, it was an opportunity to be the showman as ever. The president of the United States confirming to the world that he and the first lady have both tested positive. <laughs> President Donald Trump is being taken to a military hospital less than 24 hours after his coronavirus diagnosis was announced. We're going to make sure that things work out. Today we learned the president was given an antibody cocktail made by the company Regeneron. This morning the president is doing very well. I'm starting to feel good. The president received uh, a special antibody therapy directed against the coronavirus, and we're working very closely with the company to monitor him. Frankly, they're miracles, if you want to know the truth. They're miracles. People criticize me when I say that, but we have things happening that look like they're miracles coming down from God. Today, he feels well. He's been up and around. Our plan for today is to have him to eat and drink, uh, be up out of bed as much as possible, to be mobile. This is the real school. This isn't the let's read the book school. I think we're going to pay a little surprise to some of the great patriots that we have out on the street. God bless our president. I will die for him. I will die for that man happily. Hope is that we can plan for a discharge as early as tomorrow to the White House where he can continue his treatment course. Tonight, President Trump made the short flight back to the White House. I learned so much about coronavirus. Don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. We have the best medical equipment, we have the best medicines, all developed recently. We're the greatest country in the world. We're going back, we're going back to work, we're going to be out front. I stood out front, I led. Okay, let's bring in our two new guests now. We have the Democrat strategist Jim Manley with us. Uh, Jim worked for years with the Senators Harry Reid and Ted Kennedy. And we have Jason Osborne, who was a senior advisor for the Trump campaign in 2016. Jim, we're going to start with you. Um, do you think the way that the president handled this entire episode did him uh, any favors or the opposite? Uh, as far as I can tell, it was a net negative. Every poll that I've seen uh, since that episode has showed him a losing altitude. Uh, CNN over the weekend showed that 60% um, of the people disagreed with the way he handled uh, that episode, or you know, his hospitalization uh, 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 over the last week or so, and he's uh, losing uh, in states uh, across the country uh, as we get closer to the election. Jim, you know, I think he had a chance to try and rally the country and to show some sympathy by dealing with this in a much more honest ma uh, manner than he did. And he, uh, you know, all we heard was distortions and obfuscations from the, uh, from the White House and, and or from, you know, the, uh, the White House doctor. And I think it's uh, done some real damage to his polling. Jim, you don't have any admiration for the way he handled it. He's 74 years of age. He got a potentially serious virus. Um, he came out in incredibly quick time and then went straight back to work, top of the White House. He's saluting, he's waving, and he's saying, look, don't let it dominate you. I'm 74, I'm a senior. If I can handle it, you can handle it. Let's get back to work. You don't have any admiration for that whatsoever? None whatsoever. C couple points. Number one, uh, all he's done is make the White House a super spreader, you know, a hot spot uh, for the coronavirus in Washington, D.C., number one. Number two, you know, for some strange reason, uh, Senior citizens don't like the uh, the idea that he's telling them to suck it up 
uh, and not to be afraid of this thing uh, as they're dying in droves. And, uh, you know, again, as far as I'm concerned, that whole episode at the White House when he flew back in the helicopter and did that rally, you know, th th that was just shades of prone in Argentina. Uh, I, I mean, it was... I, it was it was a play out of a third world uh, dictator's playbook. Jason, well, I, I, it's going to come as no surprise that I completely disagree with Jim on this. I think you know the one thing that we can appreciate about Trump is that he is the master of political theater, and so what he's done in terms of his approach in, when he got the virus was to display courage and strength, um, fight the disease, do everything that the doctors recommended, and I you know I would imagine that there's uh, there were doctors in there that, that mentioned different therapies or different treatments that he could use. And he said, if it worked for one person, then let me try it. I think what he is trying to do, and I think he did it extremely well, is come from a position of strength. And any doctor will tell you, um, even your mother will tell you when you get sick, is that you know, your adrenaline is pumping and you uh, attack whatever you're sick with, your mind can help your body um, heal faster. And that's what I think, you know, Donald Trump was trying to portray his what in him flying back to the White House, him standing at the top of the steps as he's entering the White House. If he had gone into the into the White House without signaling anything, the press would have said, oh, he's sick. He could barely even stand. Um, we need to know more information. What he was trying to do was honestly look out at the American people and say, look, I can fight this. You can fight this, too. I know the damage that it can do, and I'm committed more than ever to continue to move this, you know, and, and bring the country back together. He's giving hope to people and inspiration that they, too, can fight the coronavirus. As you, we've also seen it reported in numerous papers uh, that President Trump has a golfing relationship with the CEO of Regeneron, and uh, that in some way kind of puts uh, them in an invidious position. They sort of ask, they're sort of suggesting that he's giving them preeminence over other suppliers of monoclonal antibodies, for example, um, Eli and uh, AstraZeneca. What do you think about that? I sure hate to. Look, I hope that therapy works. I honestly do, but I sure hate to be the president of that company right now trying to navigate those waters. The president really, really did that company and Americans a disservice by touting it like that based on uh, very little of any uh, firsthand knowledge. Uh, again, he's using an experimental cocktail uh, along with Regeneron and God knows what else, including steroids. Um, and so for him to be touting this thing like this is just sets a really, really bad precedent and once again shows his disdain for you know basic science, quite frankly, right. and also he's willing to use the CDC to try and advance his political goals, uh, in, in, you know, in order to try and hype this thing to the extent possible before the elections in November, which, by the way, are in just a few weeks. Uh, one last point for both of you. You've heard of the Lincoln Project. Uh, they produced this spoof ad in which they compare the president to some sort of cheap car salesman. Let's have a watch, and then I'll ask you about who's behind it in a moment. Perhaps you recognize me. It's your favorite president. I got back a day ago from Walter Reed Medical Center. I went in, I wasn't feeling so hot. And within a very short period of time, they gave me Regeneron. A short 24 hours later, I was feeling great. And that's what I want for everybody. If you're in the hospital and you're feeling really bad, Regeneron. We have hundreds of thousands of doses that are just about ready. You're going to get better. You're going to get better really fast. Regeneron. Because I feel great. I feel like perfect. I want to get for you what I got. Regeneron. And you'll see some amazing things happen. You're going to get better. You're going to get better fast, just like I did. Jason, who are the Lincoln Project? And why do they produce um, online spoofs like that? Well, listen, the Lincoln Project is run by a bunch of has-been gunslingers that the Republican Party has used over the years. The reality is four or five of those guys all tried to get jobs with the Trump campaign, and they were turned down. Uh, they are acting just like many other folks that are no longer part of the political machine that has dominated the Republican Party from a consulting crew um, with the folks that did in 2016 before Trump was elected coming out and, and expressing uh, disdain for Trump and endorsing Hillary Clinton. These guys are just trying to make a name for themselves. They're trying to set themselves up for if Trump loses, that they can be hired um, by the next 
uh, establishment candidate here in D.C. Um, you know, and I think it's a useless exercise, and I think it's going to go down in flames. I, I just don't Jim, think it's... Jim, we're nearly out of time. Uh, do you think ads like this uh, actually move the needle uh, for the election at all? <laughs> Honestly, none whatsoever, but that's not the real purpose behind it as far as I'm concerned. The only thing that's going on here is that these guys are playing in Trump's head, and it's fantastic. You know, the, the funny thing is that, you know, I know a couple of those guys are stone-cold killers. A whole bunch of my friends on the left uh, hate them. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Jim Manley and Jason Osborne, hope we can all stay friends in the future. Thanks so much for your contributions to The Nexus. Of course. And thank you at home and on your phones for watching. Remember, you can see this and all our previous episodes on our channel on YouTube. Uh, just type in Nexus TRT World. Till next week, then. Goodbye.